How's it going guys? My name is Eric from X300 Source and this is my 1997 Jaguar XJ6L and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to remove all four door cards or door panels, whatever you want to call it, and then also replace the speakers because these cars are old and they tend to go bad. Uh, this is, is a non-premium sound car, so there was the, the non-premium, which is this one, and there was also the Harman Kardon premium one. You'll know because if you have premium, your speaker grills here will say Harman Kardon on them, and then also on the parcel shelf underneath the rear windshield, you will have a subwoofer there. So you can uh, you can check that out. But either way, this this guide should work for the four door speakers. Uh, so I'm gonna go over a few tools that you will need, only a few. Uh, number one is a regular size Phillips head screwdriver. You'll also need a regular size flat head screwdriver. You'll need a small flathead screwdriver. And then the last thing is, I guess technically optional, but you'll definitely want one. One of these plastic panel, or not plastic panel puller, but the panel puller tool, I guess you'd call it for the plastic fasteners. There are a bunch of them in these doors. And you could go at it with your hands or other pry tools, but this makes it so easy and they're like 10 bucks. So definitely worth it. Head down to Pep Boys or your favorite auto parts store and pick one of these up. I highly recommend it. Almost forgot. One more thing I recommend is some type of organizer thing just to keep your uh, your screws and other fasteners straight. Uh, it's uh, you know not necessary but definitely a big help. Alright so seeing as we are going to be messing with part of the electrical system it's probably a good idea to head into the trunk here and disconnect the negative terminal of the battery so Nothing is live, and there's no chance of us messing up the electrical system. There we go. We're here at the front driver's side door, and we're going to start up here. Without any further ado, let's get to it. Uh, so the first thing is, behind your door handle here, you're going to have, you'll see it, a little, uh, a little opening here in this plastic tab hopefully you can see there it is a little, little opening there you're gonna pop your small screwdriver into that and then just pry out and it will release and then you can simply pull this door handle back and remove this plastic trim piece here to reveal the first screw underneath all right, once you have that first plastic cover removed, next thing is to take your Phillips head screwdriver, the normal size, and just undo the screw back here. Bear with me, I'm doing this one with one hand. I usually use a stand for the camera, but this one needed to get a better angle. Just want to make a quick note, this is the fastener that came out from underneath that black cover and the door handle. And I noticed that this one's actually different from my passenger side. I'm not sure which is stock. So this is what the driver's side looks like. It has a normal, it's a normal screw with a washer on it. On my passenger side, it was, it had no washer and it was coated in like the black oxide type coating. I'm not sure which is OEM Jaguar. Clearly someone has been in here before me, but uh, one of those two is the correct one. So if you guys are trying to keep track of the fasteners with this video, hopefully that's helpful for you. All right, once that screw is out, next thing is just pull the handle and pop off this, uh, the sort of a cup that goes around this piece here. Uh, sometimes the gasket will come off with this and stay on it. And sometimes it's kind of gotten stuck to this trim piece with age. And uh, either way, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure you keep track of it so you can put it back when we reassemble everything. The next step is to remove this wooden trim piece. And the way we do this is we pull outward where, it, uh, where it's near the, uh, the door handle here. And then once it's outward and has just cleared the door handle on the inside, we can slide it what would be towards, if the door is closed, it'd be towards the, the front of the car. We can slide it and then it comes right off. You can see here, these clips go here and here and the sliding action is what locks it in. Once that wooden trim piece is removed, the next step is just this screw here and this screw here.
once this screw and this screw are removed, we only have one more screw on the upper panel piece here, and it's hidden behind the little gasket thing that seals the defrost vents up here to the dash. So if you pull up underneath, underneath here you'll see it reveals our Phillips head screw. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this guy. I just want to make a note, these two screws were black coated screws with washers attached, in case you're following along. And then the one underneath the rubber piece here is a little strange, it has a rounded flanged cap and then the tip of it has like, um, hope, I hope it focuses, it has like a bladed, uh, bladed tip, kind of flares to more of a flat shape. So if you're keeping track, this is the one that comes out from underneath the rubber piece. Once the screw underneath the rubber piece here is removed, we've only got one fastener left before we can remove the top panel from the lower panel, and that is this plastic push-in fastener. This one's a little unique. It doesn't come, you, you'll be able to see right at the very front edge of the door here, the, the cap to this push fastener, uh, but it actually does not come out from the panel. It stays with this top panel piece. So when you get your pry tool here, make sure you're putting it between the metal of the door and the back of the panel and prying that whole thing out together so that the push fastener here stays with the, the panel itself. All right, here we go. That's loose. Once this piece here has been freed, the top panel is ready to come off. All you need to do is simply lift up and give it a bit of a jimmy. Make sure also that you clear the door handle and that you lift up to get the uh, lock post indicator thing through the door panel and then you've removed it. Once you have removed your top panel here, there are only two, two screws that you need to remove for the lower panel. One is here at this metal tab and one is underneath the door handle here covered by a plastic cap. I'll show that to you in a minute, but for now, let's remove this top one right here. And this guy is a uh, flanged tip or flanged head and it's pretty short. The last screw for this lower panel is underneath this handle here. You can see right here, it's covered by this plastic cap. So grab your small flathead screwdriver and just give it a little bit of a pop and it will come right off. Once the cap is off, I think it's a little difficult to see on the camera, but right in here, you will see a Phillips head screw. So grab your normal Phillips head screwdriver and undo it. At this point, all of our screws holding this bottom panel have been removed, and we're gonna go with our pry tool here and remove all of the plastic push fasteners. Some people call them Christmas tree fasteners. They'll be all down the side here and up this way. Now, I know for a fact I've had this panel off before, and this one is missing quite a few of those plastic push fasteners. I think a previous owner probably broke a couple of them when they were removing this panel. So, Yours might take a little while longer depending on how many clips are there. Um, I know my passenger side has all the clips and that took a little bit longer, but either way, just be patient with it, work your way around, and uh, I'll catch up with you in a minute. There's one tricky piece that I'll have to explain right, right here that will hold it in. It's not one of these push fasteners, but for now, let's remove the push fasteners. It helps if you get underneath here on your back. You can see all of the push fasteners that are in a row here, right at the bottom of the door.
All right, so I believe all the fasteners have been removed. You can see the door is pretty loose here. It shakes around a lot. That probably means you've got all the fasteners loose. Now here's the tricky part. Behind the, uh, the handle here, right in this area, there's this really, really poorly designed plastic clip. And the way it works is the plastic clip slides into the sheet metal in the door, and then there's a metal prong on the back of this panel that slides into the plastic clip, and then the metal prongs expand outward to hold it in place. And the idea is that that should just be an efficient, uh, an efficient clip, and that when you remove the, uh, the door panel, or try to, the plastic piece will remain in the door, and the metal prong that goes into it will be able to uh, sort of compress and slide out. Unfortunately, that's not what ends up happening. I'll show you when I get the door panel off, or actually, yeah, I'll actually cut to that right now and show you what I'm talking about so that you can see what's going on before I actually remove the panel. So I'll cut to that now. Okay, so here is this plastic clip that, uh, that I'm talking about being so problematic. The way it's meant to work is that this thin gap there is meant to slide onto the sheet metal in the door here. So let me see if I can make it happen. It's a little difficult with one hand, but oh, wow, that was usually easier than I thought. So that's that's what it's meant to do. So uh, the idea is that this sate would stay in the door, and then the prong, metal prong on the back side of the door panel slides into this gap and then expands on the other side and holds in. Obviously, this won't pull out this way. But of course, like I said, it doesn't happen, so the, the, the prongs are too stiff, essentially. So what ends up happening is you can't get the door to slide, to, to come directly outward. So what you end up having to do is uh, jimmy it around and actually get this to lift up off and come out with the door. If we go over to the, the door panel itself, one second. So here we are at the door panel, and the way this works is this uh, the this sort of uh, angled, beveled end is. Remember, this is the this is where the metal of the door is, like this, and the metal prong pushes through and expands and keeps it in the door. So what's supposed to happen when you remove the door is this will just pull out of this clip, but it doesn't. I mean, it's very, very stiff. So what you end up having to do is actually like uh, pull this out with the door or with the door panel and then use pliers here to compress the, the prongs with one hand and then you can slide this off with the other. I'll just use those pliers to compress the tabs there and pull this piece off. Now I'm going to cut over to the door and show you where to put this so that when you reinstall the door panel, everything goes according to plan. Okay, just reinstalling this. There we are. So this stays in the door and will be there when we reinstall the panel. But now I'll cut back to the actual video of me removing the panel while this thing's being so problematic. Hopefully that little explanation was helpful. Now I'm gonna show you what it takes to actually get this panel off when the clip is, uh, is giving you a hard time. So here we go. Uh, I might fast forward it, I'm not sure how long it's gonna take, but it's basically just a lot of lifting and jimmying and eventually it will come off. And uh, also note that the uh, you may break it a little bit. That's probably okay. I know the first time I took this panel off, the clip wasn't was actually improperly installed and that was possibly intentional so that it would be easy to remove this panel uh, I'm not sure I'd recommend doing that uh, maybe you can uh, I usually reinstall them correctly because it's not that difficult to remove uh, you know once you know what you're doing uh, but uh, but yeah here we go
There we go, and I didn't break it. So once it's off here, I'm not sure how well you can see. Hopefully you can see. There's one clip here for the puddle light in the corner of the door, or not clip, but plug. There's one for the circuitry that deals with the memory seats and the window switches. And then there's a connector here that connects the speaker. So we'll undo that guy. We'll undo the switch gear wiring here. One and two. And then we'll undo this last clip for the puddle light. There we are. Uh, this one has a little uh, wire cross piece that you press down to release the clip. And we can feed that out. And we have successfully removed our door panel. Our door panel is out and the crappy clip that went there is reinstalled in the door. Now we can actually proceed to removing our speaker. So uh, the inside of the panel is a little different driver side versus passenger side because there are more switches in the door on the driver side. So in the passenger side, I think I remember there being, I needed to, to remove a total of six screws. I think in the driver side door here, we ought to be able to do it with five. The idea is we remove these five screws, which I've numbered, and then you can bend the very back piece of the door panel from the more for, forward piece and remove the speaker. Uh, first, I'm going to unscrew one, two, and three screws that hold the speaker to the door and set those aside and save them because we'll use them for reinstallation. Uh, they already thread correctly into the spaces in the door. So if we save them and reuse them, we won't need to do any drilling or anything like that when we install our new speaker. It'll just be plug and play. So, okay, I'm gonna cut, everything's gonna be unscrewed. Now I've removed the three screws holding the speaker in and set them aside. I've also removed these five numbered screws. Um, you may, like I said, on the driver versus passenger side, have a different number of screws to remove. Just play with it until you can get the speaker out and uh, make sure you keep track of where everything came from. But now that everything's unscrewed, you'll see the speaker is kind of stuck. You just sort of peel it. There's like a sort of sticks on the first one, but sorry for the bad camera. All right, now it's loose. And of course it doesn't pull out of the door. So what I'll do is bend this up to pull this out. I'll cut to when that's done. The speaker's out. Uh, this one actually looks like it's not in too bad of shape, although you can see cracks starting to form. But this was my passenger side front door speaker and you can see it's absolutely destroyed and when this happens your speaker will start to sound like this <laughs> I'll be replacing my stock speakers with these. These are Kicker KSC 650s. They cost me $80 for the set, uh, for a pair I mean, and I'll get into that more in a sec. They are a six and a half inch speaker. I know on the Jaguar forums, there's a lot of debate about what the correct size is. Some people say they're five and a quarter, some people say six inch, some people say six and a half. Well, I know these fit. I've already installed two of them before making this video. These definitely fit, and I honestly believe that the speaker sizes are inconsistent across brands. That seems like that would explain why everyone thinks a different size is correct. What's more important is that you get one with a lot of different mounting hole options because right now what's most common on speakers is just two and two. But the Jaguar use, uh, speakers use one, two, three. So if you want to use the stock screws and the stock screw holes, make sure you get one with a lot of options. If you don't care to upgrade, I know that at the time of filming this video, the stock speakers are available and those are either 30 bucks for a single or 30 bucks for a pair. I forget which. Um, the thing is though, those still have the foam surrounds. So eventually they will go bad. I'm planning to keep my car for a long time. So I sprung for a slightly more expensive set with rubber surrounds that should be more durable. I bought these speakers 
on crutchfield.com and I love them because they have a little module that will let you put in your car and it will tell you if a certain set of speakers will fit. And they actually take apart cars, they measure, they test, install, they take photos. So they're pretty reliable. Just make sure you play around with it because for example, my car is a long wheelbase model and when I put in XJ6L into the module, it said we haven't measured that car. But if I put in XJ6, then it'll actually say we measured it, here's what fits, here's what doesn't. So they might not have your exact model, but they'll have, they have the XJ6 for example, and all of these should be the same size. So you can definitely play around with it for better results. In addition, Crutchfield also provides these adapters for free. Now, they, they called these both the Metra 71-017C adapters, and then in their invoice they sent me they called them Volkswagen wiring harness. But regardless, these are adapters that go from the Jaguar harness in the door on this end to spade connectors that plug direct into the speakers, meaning there is no cutting and no soldering, it's just plug and play, which is great. Now, there are also a lot of cheaper options on Crutchfield that would fit, but again, I went with these for $80 for a pair because they have the nice rubber surrounds. They should be more durable. All right, so I've got the speaker here reinstalled with the three factory screws and the three factory mounting holes. And then in addition, I've screwed back in the five mark screws here. And I plugged in the adapter to the speaker using the spade connectors. These come in two different sizes, so you can't mess it up. They have to go on their respective terminals. So now we're gonna head over to the car and start putting things back together. Now we're back at the car and we're going to reinstall this lower panel. So step one will be to plug the factory Jaguar speaker connector into the other end of our adapter. And then also plug the connector in for the puddle light in the corner of the door. Simple enough. And the Pause. I made a mistake here. So if you notice, I just plugged the wire for the puddle light directly into the puddle light. But what I should have done is fed the wire downward through the circular hole where the arrow is pointing and then fed it back up from behind and plugged into the puddle light. If you rewind the video, you'll be able to see how it was when I removed the door and that's how it should be. Last step for wires is everything, all the switch gear on the door. These are pretty short, so it's a little tricky. One and two. And then we'll snap this back in. Going in should be much easier than out. Just line up the uh, plastic fasteners. In fact, I'm gonna get on my knees. Give it a good shove and make sure to peer down and watch that that metal piece is going into that crappy plastic clip just so that everything's lined up. And now we can start adding our fasteners back in. But first, I'm going to reconnect the battery, plug in or turn on the radio and just as a sanity check, make sure this speaker's playing. So after I've done that, I'll rejoin you. Now we're going to reinstall the screw and the little cap that go in underneath this handle here. Sounds good. You'll know this one's tight when the, uh, the handle here doesn't wobble around relative to the, the base of this, uh, this panel. And then we just snap our little clip cover back in real easily. Right there. The only other fastener for this bottom uh, bottom panel is this one here. All right, and now we are going to go get the uh, the top trim piece here and finish up closing this uh, the store up. Now we grab our top panel and slide it on. First thing you should do is make sure that the lock post here goes through the hole in the panel.
and then slide down and make sure that the push fastener on the uh, the end of the the, uh, the panel really close to the front of the car gets pushed in and then for alignment purposes what can be helpful is if you check for the screw holes that match up with these two screws and then you can also check to make sure that the uh, the window seal here lines up where where it should be Now we reinstall the screw that's hidden here behind the rubber seal. Next thing is to reinstall the two screws here and here. You can make sure by looking through again that the holes are lined up. All right, that's in place. Almost done now. Next thing we do is take our wooden trim piece here, slide the door handle through like this, and then line up these tabs with these holes and then slide back to lock it in. The last thing we need to do is reinstall our little trim piece here. So just lift the door handle a little out and thread, oh, that's backwards. Lift it out, thread it through, and then make sure that the chrome rim seats in the rubber gasket correctly, like so. And then get your screw. And screw in. Finally, get your plastic cover here, line up the two tab side with the two tabs here, and then the, the single opening goes on the, goes further back in the door. Just press it in, and you're done. Now we're in the rear, and the first step again is gonna be to remove this top trim piece, and it happens much the same way that the front does. So we'll pop the black clip off of the inside of this door handle. We'll undo that one screw there. We'll remove the trim around the door handle. We'll do the same bend and slide motion to remove this trim piece. And then we will remove the screws inside here. And I'm gonna cut to that being finished right. We have now removed the, the plastic cap on this screw here. We removed the screw, we removed the trim around the handle. We then pulled the wood trim here out a little and slid to remove it. And then that revealed a screw here and a screw here, which we also removed. And this panel is ready to come off, it's already loose. Now, uh, I'll show you, it's really easy. Just lift it over the lock and it comes right out. Now, sometimes I have had a situation where there's a little bit of stickiness around here. Um, there isn't a fastener there, as you can see, though. So just give it a bit of a more jimmy. I think it's just because things are old and they've been in the same spot for a long time, they kind of get stuck. But yeah, it just looks right off. Now we're going to start removing the bottom panel here. It's a bit different from the front. So here are the differences. Number one, there's no screw or metal tab here you have to worry about. Uh, that's different. Number two is instead of just a 
single screw with a cap on the handle here there are actually another two lower or further back and the way this will work is those three will be removed and then this entire handle will pull away from this piece separately and then we can remove any plastic push fasteners and there isn't one of those tricky white metal and plastic crappy clips on the rear doors which is awesome one more thing with these doors you actually do need to remove the puddle light because there's a wire that uh that you need to remove first so to do that what we need to do is in the door pocket here there's this quarter turn screw so you just give that a 90 degree turn and then the puddle light will drop out let's do that now we get our full-size flathead we give this a 90 degree turn it's a bit of a tricky angle as you can see there we are and then the puddle light just drops right out and there are plugs so what i'm gonna do is one set of wires here is purple and green and the other is blue and yellow i'm gonna take a sharpie and just label which is which so i get it right and then i'll be right back i labeled the puddle light here and i pulled off the connectors they're just spade connectors so they just slide directly off of the contact pins there we go the next thing we're going to do is just like the front we're going to pop this cap off and remove the screw from there and then in addition we're going to remove the screws in these holes and once that's done this entire handle will come off and i'll bring you guys back when that's done all right all three screws are removed and then this is literally just going to pull right off once this handle is removed the next thing we can do is get our panel pry tool and just go around like we did in the front and pop out all of the plastic push fasteners. Now note that there's a little bit of like black like gasket maker or glue here i'm not sure why i think it's an accident like it dripped during manufacturing you don't need to replace it or anything like that so just pull it off all right just like that the door comes out pull these wires through that we just connected from the puddle light we unplug the connector for the switches. We unplug the speaker. We have our door panel removed. With our door panel removed, we're gonna go ahead and remove the three screws that are holding the factory speaker in place. And then we're gonna remove these eight speakers that are uh, screws rather that I have marked in red. The W here and there denotes that these two screws have washers. So once we do that, we'll, once we remove the screws for the speaker and then remove those, we'll be able to bend, just as in the front, bend this piece away from this piece, open them so that this can slide out between them, and then put the new speaker in, screw them into the factory holes with the factory screws, and put everything back together. Um, one thing I will note is that in the rears, I did, for my particular set of speakers, had to just shave down one of the mounting tabs in order to get it to fit. I'll show that to you now. Okay, so here you can see where I modified my speaker a little bit. I just had to shave down that one mounting tab you can see because it was rubbing up against the inside of the door panel and preventing the holes on the speaker from aligning properly with the holes for the speaker screws and so I just shaved it down. And that tab is just for using the speaker grill provided with the kicker speakers, which I am definitely not using. And it definitely, or it, I, I believe it does not fit in the 
space for the speaker grills on the X300s, so you can't use it anyways, so it totally doesn't matter that you shave that off. Now I'm going to just screw in the speaker and replace all of these screws that I removed, and then when I come back, I'll be at the car ready to reattach this to the inside of the door. So here we are, speaker is in, the adapter from Crutchfield's connected, it's screwed in, all these screws here in the door panel have been replaced, so now it's time to plug everything back in and reinstall the door panel. I'm going to leave the entire reinstallation all in one take here. I'll probably fast forward it a little bit though, um, but since you've already seen this come off, it's just the exact reverse. So anyways, yeah, here we go. So sometimes the you'll be able to see if it happens to you the adapter I'm using from Crutchfield is preventing the door from closing or from the panel from going back on so you just have to reach back here and push it down out of the way That happened on the other side as well. If any of these three aren't going in, just make sure you look in the hole and check the alignment with the uh the screw hole that's uh, attached to the actual metal on the back side of the panel. filming you know <laughs> oh you are yeah sorry it's okay I have to finish it. yeah i'm almost done can you do it yeah almost done it's, uh, it's just going back together right at the end it's nice looking card inside thank you yes yeah, the inside looks nice, the outside doesn't look so nice. If you just gonna give it a paint, it's beautiful. Yeah, I agree. I'm excited. This summer I'm gonna have it repainted. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go down to the block. Well, that's it. That is the front and rear door, the door cards removed, speakers, new speakers installed, and both of them replaced. The only thing left to do would be to reconnect the battery in back, and of course test this one, and, uh, and that's it. All right, guys, well, thank you so much for watching. That's it, all four speakers are in. You guys saw both the fronts and the rears. If you 
attempt this one yourself. Good luck. As you saw, it wasn't too, too bad. Uh, and you can definitely do it on your own, although an extra set of hands is helpful for certain parts. With that said, uh, you know, keep an eye out on this, uh, on this YouTube channel for more X300 related content. I've got definitely in the next few months, we'll be doing a video about the, uh, the paint in this car, getting it repainted. I might show you guys some prep work or something for that that you could do to save money before you take it to the body shop. And I definitely also have the, uh, the classic uh, sort of electrical issues relating to the electric locks and the trunk, which I'll elaborate more on if I make a video about that topic, which I will. And with that said, thank you guys again so much for watching. And follow me on uh, YouTube, hit the subscribe button if you liked it from, you know, if you want to see more X300 content. Uh, I'm on YouTube, Reddit, Twitter, Instagram. I think that's it for now, uh, but across the board my username is x300source. Um, the idea is that this channel will turn into something sort of in the vein of e39source, that's a YouTube channel that uh, does e39 specific content for e39 BMWs and they go real deep into all the common problems and stuff like that. Alright guys, thank you so much, have a good one. One more thing, if you have questions, of course, leave them in the comments. Also, if you have any requests for X300 related content, if you have an idea, throw them in the comments and uh, I'll definitely check it out. Uh, for now, I'll be reading every single comment on my videos. All right, thanks guys.